Fuck, the lighting's terrible. Holy shit. There we go. Hey guys, this is my first video on my new channel. Uh, there's, there is an explanation of why I'm restarting my channel. It's not really the funnest thing in my head, but I'm also sorry for not uploading in 12 months. So let's just get to it. We were watching a video called Life of a Billionaire Son by Bobby Misner. Misna, Misner. <laughs> I'm fucking retarded. I don't know if if I'm pronouncing it right or if I just have some sort of autism. But he seems to be this rich snob from Australia, which I'm from, which is not great to know. That's moved to LA because apparently his father was rich, and now he's a little cunt. So we should just get right into the video and you know, fucking roast this cunt. Your life is like a movie and you're the main character. So why wouldn't you make it the greatest movie you've ever seen? You see Bobby, there's a really huge amount of people that can't actually really fulfill their lives cause you know, they don't got money like you, they don't have a rich daddy for you to suck his dick to get an extra buck to buy some Gucci. So as much as people probably want to fulfill their life, they can't. So I'm not sure if that's meant to rub shit on our face or not, but that's just, that's none of that, none of that. Who is Bobby? Basically a little bit of a misfit kid. A kid who has everything. Bobby likes to live life fast. Fast cars. Beautiful girls. Parties. I think what Bobby's trying to do here is he's trying to make himself feel different and quirky, you know, quirky and different from others. But the way he's trying to describe it from things he likes is what every person wants, Man well mainly males, fast cars, beautiful girls, parties, that's what everybody wants in their life, that's what they want to do all day every day, but they can't. But because Bobby is a billionaire, he can do what the fuck he wants. My life hasn't always been like this. I was born in Australia and I was raised by a single mom because my parents were divorced at a very young age. My mother has to be the sweetest person I know in the world. Not having a dad around, I misbehaved a lot. She always saw me as a perfect child, so I got away with a lot more than I should have. This meant that I had to move to a lot of different schools, 10 to be exact. I flex, but okay. I didn't grow up rich and I didn't grow up poor. I was fairly average and I didn't know my dad had a lot of money until I turned 15. This is when he sold his company for $300 million. Then my life changed forever. I moved to Europe. My dad started getting a lot of nice things. We got a villa in Saint-Tropez, 10 houses in Monaco, a home in London, super yacht, private jet with our family name on the tail number. I see the point of why Bobby's doing this documentary to show that billionaires' children are not spoiled brats, but him flexing what his father got with his money is kind of like, you see, you see what I mean? It's like, it's, the documentary is not really helping his point. I've always hated how just because someone is born into a family of wealth, people automatically label them as a spoiled brat. Yes, my dad has a private jet and I love flying in it. Yes, my dad has a mansion and cars and I love making videos with them. Who wouldn't? But I have never pretended that those things were something that I earned. He literally just proved my point right there. Like, is he, is he, is he an idiot? Is he stupid? And I recognize that my dad is the one who worked hard for them. This is why I have the ambition to work hard enough to achieve a successful life of my own and break the stereotype of all rich kids being lazy, spoiled, and relying on their trust funds. If I was gonna survive in this world, I needed two things. One, discipline. Two, friends in high places. You know, what would have actually been a better idea is that he literally cut everyone that was rich, was like in high places in their lives, 
and just started with m the minimalist amount of money and got a standard job and found his way up himself. That would have been a much smarter idea for him to do instead of whatever the fuck he's trying to do right now. So I was sent to one of the world's most elite boarding schools called Millfield, a school attended by countless athletes, bankers, CEOs, politicians, royalty, millionaires, even the pop star, Ella Eyre. And then there was me, a delinquent, rebel, outsider, misfit. But this time, I wasn't alone. There were many other kids just like me. We'd all been sent there for reform. Hmm. Being a misfit, and then there being others just like you. Hmm, I'm not sure if it works like that, my friend. And we weren't about to let that happen. We spent the next two years at school, bending and breaking the rules in every way, shape and form. Believe me, the things that you're not allowed to do are always the most fun. Oh, he's so quirky and different. It was my last straw. Some of us decided that on my 18th birthday, we needed to skip school and go to the south of France to party. When we got back, the whole school was talking about it and I was asked to leave, along with 25 others that week. Him saying that he got 25 others expelled from this really high standard school, which their parents have to pay so much fucking money to send them there. And he's happy, he's happy he got these people expelled. It was like, that's one of the oddest flexes I've ever seen. But like most kids, I still had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. Three things my dad's always said you need for success. First, an idea. Then, a lot of hard work and time. Third, you need some luck. So, if I was going to create my own world, I needed to know how to make money. And since he knows how to do that better than anyone, I began to work for one of his companies at Abbey Road Studios, London. It's where the Beatles recorded. So basically, the way he's trying to discipline himself is just getting a job offer from his dad that's literally, like, I don't even know what to say to this. Like, it's not even helping his point. It's like every point he makes just, just dips down, you know? It just makes the whole point of this stupid. Now it was time for me to start following my own dreams. This was film and fashion. To Los Angeles, California. Yes, of course, LA, the place where everybody wants to live if they're a snob and want to flex on everyone like rice gum, you know? I keep saying this and it's probably getting repetitive, but this, I don't get the point of this. This is just making him look worse of a person. I once met a girl on a night out, flew her to Ibiza with me the next day and married her on a Sunday. We divorced a week later. You know, just casually married a woman and you know, Divorced? Eh, what does it get to me? Ever since I found a love for film, I finally knew what I needed to do to make my dreams become a reality. So I started a YouTube channel. I also partnered with my best friend Brandon to create Candyland Productions in order to make a living out of something we love by creating films for brands and artists. I'm even going to be creating videos for the legendary musician Julian Pareto. Yeah, well, I guess he's done something good. He's made a company with his friend, I guess that's a good thing, especially to create a bond with a friend, like with your friend. I think this is gonna be the only positive thing I actually say about this video is that he's done a good job of actually making a business. But I'm not sure where he got the funds from, if it was from himself, his friend, or his friend's dad, or his dad. Since Brandon and I also love fashion, we decided to create our own brand. One that represents the kind of kids we are, misfits, Delinquents, creatives, individuals, filmmakers, different, destructive, crazy, ragers. So that when you wear our clothes, it makes you feel like you're conveying a message of who you are. So he's made a clothing brand too, and I guess that's cool and all. But looking at it now, is this whole fucking video just in a really long ad? Saying that he's, he's successful in life and I have a business and a company now that's going to make me even more successful. Give me your money, you know? Well, that's the end of the video. This Bobby guy seems to be the casual rich kid, like he says he isn't. 
and I think he'll continue to be like that for a long time, probably until he has a midlife crisis. But that's really it for today, guys. I know it's been like the years since I made a video, pretty rusty, not sure if I'm getting better or worse, or was never fucking good at the first place. Leave a comment down below and tell me if I've got it better, um, if I should keep doing webcam, or if I should um, keep doing my little mini character animations, you know. Um, and leave a like and subscribe if you like the video um, and want to see more from me. See ya.